What's going on guys, Brian here. Today is Tuesday, October 1st, 2024. If you're new to my YouTube channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Count the spreads used to be one of my favorite options strategies to trade. However, the weekly calendars have not performed that well in my experience over the past couple years. The income-based calendars still continue to prove to be a great viable strategy for those looking to implement income-based spreads into their trading. While traders might have different opinions on what an income-based spread is, for the most part, I think we can all agree that they are strategies or spreads in which you are generally non-directional, which means you're not necessarily picking a direction in which you think the market is going to go. They generally benefit from being long theta, so they benefit from a passage of time and a low delta. Income-based strategies will generally use a decent amount of margin, and you're generally looking for around a three to maybe 10% return on your capital. In this case here, my PL is bouncing around a bit as the market is currently open, but I would like to say I'm up around 10% on this 44 DTE calendar spread. My front month was 44 DTE and my back month was 62 DTE. You can consider this my short strike and this is my long strike. And this we can see right here are the dates for this trade. I shorted the October 18th AM expiration 5500 call and then I was long the November 5th 5500 call right here. I chose November 5th because elections is the day right after. This is a good tip to keep in mind. If you're going to run some sort of income based strategies, always be aware of the macro events as you're generally going to be holding through something like the CPI reports, the FOMC reports, and something like the elections is obviously going to affect a trade like this. If you're trading a calendar, you are what's referred to as long Vega. So you benefit from an increase of implied volatility, but that only only applies if there's an increase of your long strike. So I chose to be long November 5th as it is close to the US general elections and my thought process was that imply volatility was going to increase for that expiration. I'm in two lots of the trade, so this is it right here. My current PL is $769. Again, the market is open so this is fluctuating. This is the quantity here, so just two lots. We will take a look at the risk profile in greater detail in a few minutes. This is when I entered the trade. This is the absolute latest in which I was thinking about closing the trade. And this is the same position here on option strap, which I think is a little bit easier for explaining and doing these videos as the user interface is beginner friendly in my opinion. I first took interest in this spread on September 4th in the QTA Discord right here. I had just opened up the trade, 44 DTE, 62 DTE, as you guys can see here. It's essentially the same thing. The bid ask spread was pretty bad on the trade, so I didn't get a great fill but I didn't care at the time as I knew it was a trade I really wanted to be in. I didn't make any adjustments to the trade and within a week later, the trade was up 5.5%. The good thing about having a larger account is you can obviously scale in and scale out of these. So if you start off with five or six lots, it means you can scale out in increments. For anyone around a 20K to a 30K account, using about $5,000 in capital for a 45 DTE calendar spread and looking for a 10% return is a decent way to grow an account like that throughout the year. These trades are not flashy, they're pretty boring, but again, they're considered income spreads as they tend to be a little bit more reliable. Now let's take a look at the chart and I want to walk you guys through some of my thought process throughout the duration of the trade. This is the day in which I opened it. It was during the morning session and the reason I opened it was pretty simple. We were at the 50 day moving average. I use gamma exposure, but I'm going to limit any of the advanced tools or advanced knowledge that I generally talk about on this YouTube channel. Just know that around 5,500, there was a lot of gamma at the time and I expected the markets to, in a sense, be choppy around this area for at least a week. So we ended up getting that and that's why about a week later, the trade was up over five percent i also like that we had some sort of a range that was established on at the market as we had an all-time high the market went up it didn't break that all-time high and it came back so i knew there was some sort of a ceiling there was some sort of a potential roof and then i also like the idea that we knew where our biggest pivot area was from a support level so i figured from here up to here there was a decent range around where the markets might trade because my thought process was if we came down we would probably stall around here if we went back up higher we would probably stall out around here what we can see is the market did go higher and that was not something in which I was expecting but that's the benefit of trading income spreads especially when they're over 40 DTE and especially when it's something like a calendar spread even though the market went way past where I thought it would have gone we're now 200 points higher than where I expected us to be especially given this time frame as the latest I would have liked to hold this trade would have been about 21 days but I've been in the trade for almost 27 days now and it's still profitable 
as we can see right here. Now the position currently has 17 DTE left, but this is the absolute latest in which I would like to hold it because this is the Friday of the week before it expires. So in other words, it expires seven days after this day. I do not want to hold this into a weekly expiration. I am considering actually just closing it out today and then opening up another one around a similar strike price, but that will be a little bit more directional as I'm going to have some sort of a bearish bias leading into the elections, but I don't want to be aggressive and just purchase puts. I'd rather open up a trade that has wiggle room in case I'm wrong. And that is a major benefit of something like this, like a calendar. I was expecting the market to still be closer to around the 50 day moving average. I was expecting us to be about 100 points higher or lower than 5,500, but we are way past where I thought we would have been. And again, the trade is still working out. It was already a shock that even after this bearish candle right here and this rejection after the markets broke out to new all time highs, it rejected. We ended up gapping up over this level and we are still holding above this level, which is essentially 5700. If the markets can close below 5700, there's room for my calendar spreads to make a lot of money. Now I'm trading it no longer like an income spread trader would as it has already hit the profit target, which at the higher end would have been 10%. It's been up over 10% and I have not closed the trade out now. So now it is more of a discretionary type of approach in which I'm interjecting my own biases, my own analysis. I'm looking for the markets to retrace. However, I will likely close this trade out as I just mentioned and open up one with a little bit more DTE. Now, when the market broke out and I was considering what do I want to do with this position? Do I want to open up another calendar spread? Do I want to try and hedge it or do I want to leave it alone? This is where your risk profile and risk management can really help you as you can form some sort of an educated analysis for yourself. What I decided to do at that point was I told myself, hey, if the market was to go up to 5,800, which was the next sensible area of resistance, in my opinion, using all sorts of tools and all sorts of analysis, I said, if we went up to 5,800, how much would I be down by a given time? So let's just say we were to jump to this Friday. If the market went up to 5,800, as we can see, this trade will be about break even. Now this is an estimation because there's no way to account for what implied volatility is going to do by then. So let's just say implied volatility contracted a little bit. You guys can see that this trade will actually be down. So let's just say implied volatility stayed the same, which we know it won't. Our long strike, which is this one right here, again, around expiration, it is expected to hold its volatility. So let's just say this volatility was to increase, but our front month was to have some sort of a decrease in implied volatility and the market went up. This is a dream scenario, but it's unlikely to happen. You guys can see what happens to the profit potential for a calendar like this. This is becomes now the break even zones. So it stretches all the way up here to 58, 75 or so. But again, this is a hypothetical scenario that is very unlikely. So let's just reset this. And that's why I say you don't want to drive yourself too crazy by trying to account for what you think is going to happen with implied volatility from a very, you know, nuanced perspective. It's best in my opinion, just have a general idea. At most, this is going to hold its implied volatility because of the elections. Maybe you'll get lucky with your front month and that might decrease a little bit that's a little bit more of a realistic expectation or you can keep these set to zero and then just change the overall implied volatility here obviously if both expirations go up that benefits because your long month is going up so as long as your long strike is increasing your calendar is benefiting from implied volatility of course unless the front month increases faster than the back month. So let's just say the back month increases about half a percent, but the front month increases a full percent. You guys can see right here, this PL will be red if the market went up to 5,800. That is not a scenario in which we would want to see. We can spend all day long tweaking these and playing around with this, but I would say save yourself the trouble. Don't go too crazy by trying to guesstimate exactly what implied volatility is going to do. It's better to just have a general idea and pay attention to your key levels. So at this point when the market was breaking out and I assessed what would happen if I were to hold for another week, if the market went higher, what would my p &L be? So this right here would have been the 19th into the 20th of September. When I took a look and I saw that the PNL would be barely red around this time, even if we didn't pull back, I figured it was best for me to actually hold on to the trade. So let me jump back to today. In other words, let's just say we were here right now. I looked at this and I was like, hey, we're only going, I'm going to be down less than $500 relative to if the market pulled back to even just 5,600. Remember the area in which I was targeting was 5,500. But even if we pull back to 5,600, this is where I looked at it from a three to one risk to reward ratio or potentially even higher depending on implied volatility, et cetera, et cetera. 
This is just standard trading for me, even though it's an income spread, even though it can be considered a complex option strategy, at the end of the day, it all comes back to risk management. Am I risking a dollar to make three? And if I am, what is my probability of a success? In this case here, my probability of this working out is pretty high because I'm using some sort of context. We're going into general elections. The market is at all time highs. Who's really going to be that aggressive? Is the market's going to be in an aggressive buying state right now? Is it technically risk on season it's probably not until after the elections so my thought process is the market is probably just going to stall out or even if it goes higher maybe pull back a bit or it's going to have a little bit of a retracement and i'm not really looking for a lot in this case here from a percentual standpoint if the market were to pull back about 2.5 percent that would be an ideal scenario here so if we jump forward to next week monday this is the type of stuff that i'll do if i'm going to decide if i want to continue to hold this trade if the market went up to 5800 Imply volatility stays the same. We're, we're not going to mess around with that. I have room for 80 more points up because the SPX right now is trading around 57.20. So 80 more points to the upside to be down or we'll just call this break even relative to if the market was to pull back 100 points or 150 points, there's the opportunity to be up $3,000. This from a risk to reward standpoint looks pretty appealing to me based on my expectations for trading. So if the market pulled back 2%, there's the opportunity to make about 2.5K. That again meets my risk requirements, my risk tolerance, at least until next week. The latest, as I mentioned earlier, I would like to hold this trade would be the 11th. So if at the 11th, the market was at 5,800, if I'm using this as the level to risk off of, meaning if we broke out of 5,800, I have to do something, either close the trade, cut it for a small loss, or do something to protect the trade if I'm going to continue to hold it. The difference is this is no longer an income trade. I'm trading it now with discretion. I'm interjecting other analysis, and I'm not following the rules of an income spread trade. Trader. If the market was to go up 1%, let's dial it back to this week, Friday. If the market went up 1%, that is the estimation of my PL. If the market was to pull back 2%, so I'm risking 1% to make 2%. I'm risking barely nothing to potentially make $2,000. This means it is worth it, in my opinion, to continue to hold. And this is for any of you guys that have ever asked me in QTA, in Discord oh, what are you thinking about doing here? And I might answer by saying, my, I'll let my risk profile dictate what I should or should not do. This is essentially what I mean. Now I have over $800 in unrealized gains right now. So I'm not risking anything. I am risking the unrealized gains. So the way I'm going to see this now is I'm risking about $870 to potentially make another 1200 bucks or so. That's where you have to be a risk manager and see if that is worth it because it might not be for your situation. And it's that thought process that's leading me to potentially closing this trade out today and then just opening up a different calendar. Maybe something targeting 5,600, maybe something with a little bit more DTE because this calendar is so close to expiration. And the point of income spreads is you want to keep them in rotation. They're a little bit more reliable. You just keep them in rotation, just keep them in rotation. And you just want these five, these 10% returns that keep consistently coming in every two to three weeks or so. Something else for me to consider would be the gamma exposure profile leading into this large OPEX right here. So this is a monthly expiration. And if we take a look at the gamma exposure, there is a decent amount of absolute gamma at 550 on the SPX. I'm seeing this as a potential serious resistance level right here at 575, which the market has struggled to surpass and hold above. We are in negative gamma territory for this profile here. So if the market was to break above 572, that's why it is such a key strike for me and a lot of my decision making is based around how the spy is trading around that level these are my gamma exposure profile levels right now for the week and we can see we are now below 572 as long as we are below 572 i think this trade has a decent shot if we get back above 572 then it's a little bit more problematic and i will more than likely take that as an early sign to, to close out the trade roll it up enter a different calendar and I definitely will need to do something if we break and hold above 575. So using the gamma exposure profile is something that's going to help me with my decision making. I can also choose if I'm just going to hold this until the 11th, maybe run an analysis on all the expirations leading up to the 11th. And let's take a look at what we see right here. There's still a lot of absolute gamma down here at 550 as it is the highest absolute gamma strike. As of right now, there isn't much gamma past 580. 
there also is not a lot of call open interest. Let's see right here and take a look at our put open interest. So it looks like 580. There's a spike in some open interest right here at 585 at 21,000. But for the most part, this is the 25,000 open interest right here. And we can see this behemoth of open interest at 550. This is also leading me to believe that the market is going to want to come back to at least around this area. So something else in which I might do is realize the calendars and then run some sort of out the money butterfly, maybe targeting here. So if I'm going to realize about $800 in profit today, maybe I'll take a look at something like a $400 out the money put butterfly and treat it where I'm only risking half of the profits from the calendar to potentially turn this $400 trade into something like a $4,000 trade and that's just reallocating risk is the way in which i interpret it it's less trading even at that point so i'll show you show you guys here if you're curious what do i mean let's go to the spx let's just say we want to use the same time frame of the 18th maybe come all the way down here and at this point this is practically a lotto as it's so far out the money let's come right this and let's see so for a dollar 35 that's a little too narrow for me so let's widen this up remember i'm looking for something around 400 dollars that's a little too much. Let's just pull this in. I'm just going to find something around 400 bucks. So this is around $400. It's a low probability trade. But let's just say over the next seven days or let's just say by the middle of next week here, the market was to have that same 2.5 pullback. That's another seven, $800 in profit that this trade can make. And if the market did go up to 5,800, this trade would be down $230 or so. So this almost becomes worth it for me to close out the calendar, realize that $800, and then have much less risk exposure to the markets, but still give myself the opportunity to make anywhere from an extra 500 to maybe $1,200 in the same time frame. Obviously, if we use next week Friday, which is the initial time in which I'm thinking about closing the calendars, we can see right here, same assessments. So around $300 in risk. If we come back around 2.5%, that's the opportunity to make close to 1,000. And if the market did go all the way down to 5,500, that's $1,500 in profit. This seems like a decent trade. And this is actually just reallocation of risk. This is more risk management than it is trading, in my opinion. And this is seeming like a very viable option for myself right now. Guys, hopefully this video helped. Hopefully it provides a little bit of context regarding what a trader like myself might be doing when the market is open, when I'm deciding what to do with my next position or my next trade. Leave a comment down below. If you were a little confused at any moment, sorry about that. I recommend you read on calendar spreads. So search around YouTube, see what else you can find around calendar spreads as they are a great option strategy to have in your toolkit. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.